have two great looking uh, light modified tractors here. Both of them uh, big Hemis. Uh, Sullivan's here has uh, Brad Anderson's. And uh, I think we've got the Miner Brothers on the other side. And we've got big 1471 superchargers on both of them. The nice uh, carbon fiber hats. But there's uh, two things I want to mention. The first one is that is the same front that's been on Sullivan's tractors since he started. I'm thinking in the 70s. Um, he may have been pulling before that, but that's as far back as I can remember anyways. But anyways, that's pretty awesome. That's the same front. That little massy. Yeah. So I think that's great. Piece of history right there. But the other thing I want to point out, and there's always been a lot of talk in the, if you ever watch modified tractors, you'll notice a lot of them have tube frames, but not all of them. There's a lot of wedge frames still out there. I'll get down lower so you can kind of see it. And that frame is a wedge shape instead of tube frame, like tubes like you see in a race car. Some of the other pulling tractors you saw, we can see that frame is uh, just a, like an angled C-channel wedge, but it actually wraps around the side here. So you can see it comes around the edge here. But a lot of people like that, they say it'll hook the power to the ground better than the tube chassis. So we'll see the wedge frame here. Now that's a Massey Harris You also see it on Simon's tractor. So when you're watching the modified classes, kind of watch to see which one's doing better. See if your wedge frames are doing better. Again, there's another wedge frame over there or your tube frames are doing better. But yeah, some good looking uh, unlimited or modified tractors here. We'll slip back here. Simon's is always a good running piece too. So I'll get down low again so you can see there is that wedge frame. You see they run those motors all the way as far forward as they can to get as much weight forward as they can. These high power tracks like Bowling Green here, they went all that weight on the front because it makes a big lever and puts a lot of power, lets them put a lot of power to that back, big back wheel or back wheels. Again, you'll see everything in the back has holes in it. All holes through there, all holes down there. I'm trying to get as much of that weight out of that box to go to the front. Looking at uh, Corporal's uh, Punisher here. I was talking to one of the gentlemen and I was admiring all that really nice machine work. But uh, they used to get these cast, but they can't cast them anymore, so we're getting them machined. And uh, they got it down so quickly, now there's not much more than a cast one. But we're also looking at uh, about 3,200 horsepower. And from that clutch to the top of that supercharger, the bottom of that oil pan, we're looking at about 900 pounds and $150,000. I think that comes out to about a, a little less than $120 a pound. I don't know if that's a good deal or not, but uh, it's a lot of horsepower per pound. These mags, 44 amps. Uh, back in the early, uh, my dad, late 90s, when my dad quit pulling, it was about eight amps. So they can really burn a lot more fuel. 
so they got these big big pumps on there so they can pump a lot of fuel and they got the sparks so they can burn it so they make a lot more horsepower plus they make everything so much stronger you can see these blocks are all billet now that's a billet block billet heads as you just saw the intake was billet uh, i really like this uh, system they have here for uh tension in the belt that's pretty sharp looking Just a really good looking setup here. And you got space to add more motors, which you'll see later on. And again, you can see the big tires. And I like their logo there, modern. If you need something from them, get a hold of them. They'll make you just buy anything you need. There we go. Light modified camping. Definitely one to watch for. They had a good run last night. Yeah, look them up on all your social media. We have our light modified class here. You can uh, see that you only have uh, two engines. This one's got two big Hemis on it. Obviously, you can see by the big, huge valve covers. Really good looking tractor. And uh, you can see right there is where they can add another motor. They've got the motors so close together, they have these uh, log manifolds, headers made up for it. the scales and ready for the light and modified class the American Thunder great running uh, piece of equipment right here never satisfied another hemi tractor There's our SCS gearbox. Going back to a big, basically a semi truck rear end back there. But to make it semi truck rear end, they got to put these planetaries on there. Another good run and twin here. Get the minor motors on it. It's actually uh, kind of based on a Chevy bottom end with a Hemi head. Big superchargers, look at them guys, and the big uh, carbon fiber hats. And they wrap those gearboxes, you see that? In case they explode, it's kind of like an explosion proof safety feature. Take a quick look inside his cockpit. And you can see the throttle up here. That's for uh, opening a, then he's got a fuel shutoffs down here. They can add a third motor, that's why you see three. And your reverser. So that's how you go from forward to reverse. Getting the big uh, Midas tires. Really short th treads on them, big wide.
we got the night train, Lucas Heilman, uh, my cousin's, uh, my father, John Heilman, senior's uh, great nephew is going to be driving this one. Last night, they had the fuel pump break on him, so it shut that motor down. He had a good run going. And it's one of the few Chevy tractors out here anymore. But we're wishing him luck tonight. He's got the two uh, big Chevys on there, supercharged. Big supercharger on the back one. Just a little bit more tread on his tires than uh, some of the other guys. And all of his weight is on the front end. And we see we have a little more weight. We can move the front on this one next door. Tires cut really short or limitless. Look at that cockpit. Looks really good now. They did a really nice job. Check out that big throttle. Wow. And a reverser down here. Those are uh, your brake pedals left and right. And I'll go back around the back to show you how big those brakes are on these things. You can see how beefy the pedals are. Because these things have huge disc brakes on the back. Go back where we just came from. And you can see that big disc brake back in there. There's a caliper up front. Great big caliper. You can see it on the other side as well. But yeah, these have uh, probably uh, 36 inch disc brakes. But it takes a lot to stop uh, all this horsepower. Again, another one with the great big uh, SSI superchargers on it. It's one of the top contenders in the class. And uh, that's something I've never noticed. I'll have to ask one of the guys what this is right down here. And I'll put that up above. You see the fuel tank. Another one of the light unlimiteds. Pair of Hemis again. Big Hemis. How much horsepower you uh, anticipate these make, these big Hemis? Uh, 3,500 a piece. So those 1471s are a little bit bigger. 14 high helix. And are you guys uh, 520 cubic inches or a little bit bigger? Oh, I think 540. 540 cubic inches. And uh, they've got the latest intakes. You can see how the superchargers are pushed way back. Had that out for a little while. Nice big supercharger hats. And if you're curious, there's their filter. You can see, actually see down in and see how dirty it is. I like that. And we have another inline motor combination here. Did you guys run a five disc clutch in this? No, sir. Still, still four? No, three. No, only three and it holds all that power. Well, it's got enough weight on it to just lock it. I mean, it's just to get it started. It's really about the only reason I'm not even need the clutch is to get it started. <laughs> get it going. Shift in the gear. Big 1471 high helix chargers. Nice carbon fiber hats. I like these oil filter assemblies where you can see your screen. So if you go between runs, you can take a quick look without taking it apart. And as you can see, like a lot of them, they have room for more motors. And yeah, we'll have a third on here this afternoon, hopefully, as long as we get through this with it unscathed. That's what we like to hear, unscathed. Yeah, I like it unscathed too. <laughs> <laughs> Well, good luck tonight, or this afternoon, and tonight. Yeah. 
And you can see they use a lot of uh, composite materials on the fenders and such too. Aluminum seat, like I said, try to keep the weight down. And there I said those big, uh, big, big disc brakes. A lot of these uh, tractors here also have a, a nice setup for the filters. I pointed to it earlier. That's clear view. You can see in the top. You can see it says clear view right across the top. And but the other thing I didn't know, they just pointed out to me. That guy right there. You blow air in there, and it cleans all the oil off. So you can see right away if you have a clean filter or dirty filter. If you got bearings going out bad or any metal particles, something coming apart inside, you can see if you have damage. So if you make the first pass, you got to come back six later or something. You can tell right away if you have any issues or if they come back for pull off. So that's another neat thing that uh, they've added over the years to these tractors. And uh, we were just looking at the uh, boost gauges and uh, that was at uh, 57 just a little bit ago. They just reset it, but uh, pretty good boost also for a Roots supercharger, high helix actually, but.